Arcadian Vanguard presents the Wrestling News in your daily wrestling newscast for Tuesday, December 20th, 2022. Good morning. I'm Mike Sempervivi. We begin today with Monday Night Raw broadcast live last night on the USA Network from the Wells Fargo Arena in Des Moines, Iowa. In the main event, the team of Kevin Owens and Seth Rollins defeated WWE Tag Team Champions The Usos in a non-title match when Owens pinned Jimmy. Owens thought about the pop-up powerbomb. Jimmy Uso knew what was coming. Not now he gets time. it. Now he gets it. Oh. Owens after the pop-up powerbomb to win it. He's got it. Owens has got it. The match was made as a result of Owens making the save when the Usos attacked Rollins during an earlier in-ring promo segment. The attack was the culmination of a series of blindside attacks by the bloodline throughout the show, which included Dolph Ziggler, Cedric Alexander, Mustafa Ali, and Luke Gallows. Gallows' OC partner AJ Styles also took exception to the attacks earlier in the show, challenging bloodline member Sami Zayn to a match, which Zayn won with outside interference from Solo Sokoa. The episode featured the return to WWE and the main roster TV debut of former NXT talent Bronson Reed, who assisted The Miz in defeating Dexter Loomis in a ladder match. Graves, this is it! Dexter Loomis! Oh, he's gonna do it! He's a rich, rich man! The money is his! Wait, what the hell? That's, that's Bronson Reed! You're right! Look at the size of this guy! What's he doing here? Where the hell did he come from? This colossal superstar we haven't seen in quite some time, never before on Monday Night Raw. Reed wrestled in NXT from 2019 to 2021, and since being cut by WWE in July of 2021, he'd performed under the name Jonah in Impact in New Japan, among other places. The show also featured WWE's first one-on-one intergender match in five years, in which Rhea Ripley of Judgment Day defeated Akira Tozawa. This was the first WWE match between a man and a woman since Becky Lynch defeated James Ellsworth in 2017. The match followed the loss of Ripley's Judgment Day partners Damian Priest and Finn Balor to the Street Profits, in which Tozawa had distracted Ripley and Dominic Mysterio and prevented them from interfering on Priest and Balor's behalf. Alexa Bliss's return to her previous allegiance to Bray Wyatt was teased once again, when she broke a vase over the head of Raw Women's Champion Bianca Belair during an interview segment. In other results, Bailey beat Becky Lynch after hitting her with a ringside TV monitor, and the OC defeated the Alpha Academy. In ratings news, last Friday's episode of WWE SmackDown Live on Fox drew an average audience of 2.191 million viewers, down nearly 5% from the 2.306 million who tuned in the previous week. That's according to Showbuzz Daily. The rating in the key 18 to 49 year old demographic was 0.52, down 8.77% from the previous week's 0.57, and translating to 678,000 viewers, according to WrestleNomics. The show ranked number one on network TV in the key demographic for the evening for the second week in a row. Post Wrestling reports that in Canada, SmackDown averaged 146,000 English language viewers, including 47,200 in the 25 to 54 year old demographic on Rogers Sportsnet 360. AEW Rampage, which aired later Friday evening on TNT, drew an average of 464,000 viewers up 1.53% from the previous week's 457,000, according to Showbuzz Daily. The rating for Rampage in the key demographic was 0.15, up 36.36% from the previous week's 0.11, and translating to 197,000 viewers, according to WrestleNomics. This was the highest total viewership for Rampage since the live October 21st episode, and the highest rating in the key demo since the October 14th episode, which was pre-taped. In independent wrestling news, WWE pulled NXT trainer and former ECW original Devin Hughes, a.k.a. Devon Dudley, from an ECW tribute show held Saturday night at the 2300 Arena, formerly known as the ECW Arena in South Philadelphia, according to PW Insider. Put on by Battleground Championship Wrestling and entitled Tribute to the Extreme, the show was to have had Dudley in the corner of Bully Ray for his match with Matt Cardona. 
Bully Ray, formerly known as Bubba Ray Dudley, teamed with Devon in ECW and elsewhere as the Dudley Boys. In addition to appearing in the main event, Devon was also scheduled to appear at an on-site convention prior to the show. According to Battleground Championship Wrestling, WWE issued a legal letter, which also took issue with BCW playing off what it considered to be its intellectual property. WWE has owned the rights to ECW since 2003. With some legal news, here's the Wrestling News' Lou Kippelman. Lawyers for Jeff Hardy have filed a motion to postpone Hardy's pretrial hearing scheduled for tomorrow pertaining to his DUI arrest in Florida last June. Hardy is charged with driving in violation of a driver's license restriction, driving with a canceled, suspended, or revoked license, as well as driving under the influence. According to the official document as reported in PW Insider, Hardy's defense team is seeking more time to depose the law enforcement officer involved, as well as examine potential discrepancies related to the breathalyzer used to determine Hardy's level of intoxication. A warrant for the arrest of Trinisha Daniel Biggers, a former WWE developmental talent who wrestled for TNA under the name Raka Khan, was issued in Texas on December 14th, according to information reported yesterday on PW Insider. Biggers reportedly failed to appear for trial earlier this month on charges of interfering with child custody, for which she had been originally indicted back in August of 2019, but failed to appear in court at that time as well, leading to her being listed among El Paso, Texas's most wanted fugitives. The trial had been repeatedly postponed due to the COVID-19 pandemic. During that time, Biggers' original attorney asked to be removed from the case and was replaced by a public defender. If convicted, Biggers faces up to two years in prison. Biggers appeared as Raka Khan in TNA from 2008 to 2009. She was signed to a WWE developmental contract in 2005, after making it into the top 25 WWE Diva Search finalists. She was released from WWE developmental territory Deep South Wrestling in May 2006. For the Wrestling News, I'm Lou Kippelman. In streaming news, WWE has added more classic content to Peacock and the WWE Network. Ten of the first 11 episodes of WWF Championship Wrestling from 1980 were made available to subscribers starting yesterday, most notably featuring Larry Zbysko's turn on mentor Bruno San Martino on the February 2nd, 1980 episode, often ranked as one of the most shocking and memorable heel turns of all time. The ten episodes offered to go from the January 12th episode to the April 12th episode, omitting the April 5th edition of the program. The reason for the omission is still not known, although the quality of surviving footage has been cited as the cause for similar past omissions. In addition to the Zabisco turn, the 10 episodes also include a handicap match with Andre the Giant, early appearances from Hulk Hogan in his initial WWF run, and an appearance from then-WWF World Tag Team Champions Tito Santana and Ivan Putsky. Once the company's flagship show, WWF Championship Wrestling ran in syndication, from 1971 to 1986, it was the precursor to WWF Superstars. And before we leave you today, we'd like to remind you that however you consume your content, you can find the wrestling news 24 hours a day and 7 days a week across social media. On Twitter, follow us at Wrestling News AV. Our Facebook page is also Wrestling News AV. The Wrestling News can also be found on the Arcadian Vanguard YouTube page. And for those who utilize Amazon Echo devices, just tell Alexa to play the Wrestling News Podcast, and remember to make sure you add podcast at the end. Once again, for daily updates, breaking news, and more, follow the Wrestling News across social media. And that's the news for today. If anything happens, we will be here to tell you about it. No clickbait, no paywall, just the Wrestling News. The Wrestling News is a division of Arcadian Vanguard, and the Wrestling Newscast is a production of the Arcadian Vanguard Podcast Network.